Did you know Arcanine was supposed to be a legendary Pokemon? Did you know that Gold and Silver were intended to be the last Pokemon games? Oh, you did? Good. Then I'm going to tell you some facts about Pokemon that you actually don't know. This is part 3 in my series of searching out incredibly obscure Pokemon knowledge. As always, the goal of this video is to surprise and intrigue even the most experienced Pokemon fans, and let me know in the comments if you knew any of these. But without any delay, my name is Blue Boy Finn, and let's get right into this. In the year 2000, a virtual pet Pokemon device was released in the US, called the Pokemon Pikachu GS. It was a little device that tracked your steps and allowed you to send items to Pokemon Gold and Silver. But about a year later, when the game Animal Crossing released for the GameCube, the Pokemon Pikachu GS made it into the game as a possible item for your villagers to request. A pretty awesome Easter egg. Sadly, you can't obtain it yourself though. On November 1st, 2015, a discovery was made in Pokemon Red and Blue that changed speedrunning that category forever. By walking over to the bike shop in Cerulean City and talking to the teller and pressing B right as the teller says, it's a cool bike, do you want it? It will activate instant text, meaning every time you talk to an NPC, even in battle, your text speed will not be any of the usual settings like fast, medium, or slow, but completely instantaneous. They eventually had to create an entire new category in Pokemon on red and blue speedrunning because it was debatable whether this was defined as a glitch or not. There is one Pokemon in the world that learns a move when it evolves, but is simultaneously incapable of learning that move. And that Pokemon is Meltan. This is because it is coded to learn the move Thunder Punch in any main series game it's in, but it's actually impossible to evolve in any core games. The only way to evolve Meltan is through the use of Pokemon Go, where it isn't even capable of learning Thunder Punch at all. Shiny Pokemon As soon as you explain Shiny Pokemon to somebody who has never heard of them, one of their first questions are, so are they stronger or what? In which you say no, it's just a color change. But there is one Pokemon game where random shiny Pokemon, not like scripted legendaries or something, are actually stronger than normal Pokemon. And that game is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon WiiWare. This was a download-only Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game on the Wii, and if you were to find a shiny Pokemon in this game, it will have a 200 belly stat instead of the standard 100, which is actually incredibly useful in this game. The Everstone. The item that if held by a Pokemon always prevents them from evolving. Right? Well, that's not actually true. There is one Pokemon that will completely bypass the Everstone, and that Pokemon is Kadabra. From Generation 4 and beyond, Kadabra will always evolve when traded, even if the Kadabra is holding an Everstone. Originally, people thought this was a glitch, but it's still in the game to this day, so it must be some kind of intended mechanic. There is a trainer named Last Diana in Pokemon Black and White 2 located in Accumula Town that will ask for an Excadrill as a trade. But what makes her unique is once you trade, she will then battle you, but not with any random Pokemon. She will battle you with your exact Excadrill. It will keep its nickname, gender, and nature, and even retain its shininess if you had happened to trade her a shiny Excadrill. I don't know why you would do that, but adding Last Diana to the incredibly small list of NPC trainers who could possibly battle you with a shiny Pokemon. Shout out to Joe Merrick, the owner of Cerebi, who I originally saw this from on Twitter. In Pokemon Black and White, if you happen to catch a Pokemon in the cold storage area and then trade it to Black 2 or White 2, its status screen will actually say that it was caught in the Pokemon World Tournament. This is due to cold storage and the PWT being at the exact same code point on the locations list between the two games. Would you like to know about the most important item in the entire Pokemon universe? Oh, you do? Well, then I present to you the Brick Piece. Brick Piece. Only found in Generation 1 and 2 before images of your items even existed. It is unclear what this magical Brick Piece even looks like, although we could probably imagine. But if you take this fabled brick piece to a Pokemart and sell it to a lucky vendor, you will get an astounding 25 Poke Dollars. Which could buy you absolutely nothing, but if money is no object and you seek to use the brick piece to its fullest potential, you might be a bit disappointed because the brick piece does nothing at all. But I will trade this unbelievably rare break piece for a fancy smashing of that like and subscribe button, which I would say is a pretty good deal. 
In March of 2013, an international release of a very underrated 3DS game arrived. This game was called Harmo Knight. It was a rhythm-based platformer where you hit items to play along with the beat, and well, this title was actually developed by a little-known company known as Game Freak. Yes, that Game Freak. And they actually added five bonus Pokemon levels that include remixed and remastered versions of classic Pokemon themes, and they're actually really great, and you're listening to one right now. The pre-released American box art for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire actually had some interesting changes. It included the Gotta Catch Em All slogan on the box that hasn't appeared in anything for a very long time, and the font of the title was the same as Gold and Silver. It's interesting how these little changes make the box art feel so much older. Let's talk about Pokestar Studios in Pokemon Black and White 2, a very, very underused feature of these games, which I honestly don't blame anyone for because I never did as a kid either. But I have some interesting quirks about this area that I want to talk about. There's a tile on this tree that you can surf on for some reason. Can't do anything with it, but hey, it's there. There's also this interesting quirk when it comes to this star animation that you can put on your Pokemon. I'm not sure what you have to do to get your Pokemon to have this star animation, but it has something to do with the Pokestar movies or whatever. I don't know. But what's actually cool about it, if your Pokemon happens to be shiny and also assigned the star animation, your shiny sparkles will no longer appear, but your Pokemon will still be shiny. If you use the Google Lens app on the cover of Pokemon Sword, you'll get a really cool animation to play that looks like this. Shout out to Reddit user A and the Lobster who made this observation. Venonat and Venomoth. Remember these guys? Well, if you don't, I wouldn't be surprised because interestingly enough, they haven't appeared in a single regional Pokedex since the Johto region, which doesn't even count because every Gen 1 Pokemon was in Johto. So basically, this beautiful, perfect, stunning little bug hasn't appeared in original Pokedex since 1996. Six generations, no Venonat. Why, Game Freak? We need answers! Venonat is perfect. Put him in the games. Let's talk about my favorite Pokemon of all time, Munchlax. Although Munchlax was a main character in the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire anime, if I were to ask you what English Pokemon video game Munchlax first appeared in, what would you say? If you said Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, that would be incorrect. But if you said Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, that would also be incorrect. Munchlax's first video game appearance was actually a very prominent character in Pokemon Dash on the DS, and also made an appearance in a very underplayed yet incredibly awful racing game called Pokemon Team Turbo, which if you're wondering, was made by the same people who did Pokemon Masters Arena. Well, isn't that a surprise? How did they get the Pokemon license and why did they make these games? The Shiny Charm, the item that aids many shiny hunters on their journey of obtaining their favorite alternate colored sparkly Pokemon. But the Shiny Charm doesn't always work as you would expect it to. In Pokemon Sword and Shield's Crown Tundra DLC, there are five Pokemon in total, being all the Regis, who are completely unaffected by the Shiny Charm. Meaning the odds of finding a Shiny Regi in Sword and Shield will always be 1 out of 4096 and never the boosted Shiny Charm rate of 1 out of 365. And the reason why is still a mystery to this day. Let's talk about Mew. Mew represents the pinnacle of rarity in Pokemon. It's part of the reason Pokemon is what it is today, because in the 90s everyone was freaking out trying to figure out how to get the mythical 151st Pokemon. But although Mew was introduced since the very beginning, how would you obtain a Mew right now? Like seriously, how do you get a Mew? Well, let's say our goal is to somehow get a Mew to a main series Pokemon game. And let's take away a few things. Glitches, because it would make it illegitimate, and events because those are time-based, and accessories because you should never have to buy one Pokemon. Now for this hypothetical quest for a Mew, let's say we have every single Pokemon game ever made. Sheesh, must be nice. Every main series game, every spin-off, every weird pinball game, every ancient mobile game, even you, I guess you can come with. So we have every Pokemon game. Now what? Well, can we get it in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow? No. Gold, Silver, Crystal? Nope. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald? No. Black and White? No. Black and White 2? Nope. X and Y? No. Sun and Moon? No way. Ultra Sun? Just don't. Let's go Eevee? Not without buying an accessory. 
Sword and Shield? Nope. Well, if you notice, we skipped over one group of games. That's right, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, there's no way I remember playing these games and never finding a Mew. And you'd be right. The way we actually obtain Mew is through a different game entirely called Pokemon Ranch for the Wii. Pokemon Ranch is a digital-only Wii game designed as a hub to transfer your Pokemon to and from Generation 4, and keep them on a ranch, I guess. And on this ranch lies the most important NPC in the history of Mew hunting, Haley. But she won't just give it to you. Oh my god, she won't just give it to you. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty. In order to receive a Mew from Haley, you have to catch 999 Pokemon and transfer them to Pokemon Ranch. Yes, 999. That is double the amount of Pokemon that even existed at the time of this game's release. But then, and only then, will you receive your precious Mew, and your journey is finally over. Sadly though, if you weren't one of the lucky ones and didn't have Pokemon Ranch downloaded by 2019 when the Wii Shop shut down, it is currently impossible to legitimately obtain a Mew aside from purchasing accessories using events or glitches. But hey, maybe I missed something and let me know if I did. Thank you so much for watching. Liking and subscribing tells me there's people out here who enjoyed this kind of content and really inspires me to make more.